yeah, next topic. Um, yeah, this was a doozy. So the um, World Economic Forum in Davos, you know, where basically the um, <laughs> if you're a conspiracy theorist, the cabal that controls, you know, this is where Colonel Sanders runs the world from, I believe. But it's basically rich people and politicians just talking about, you know, um, matters of economics and governance and so on. And apparently one of the uh, research, one of the economic papers that was commissioned for the latest uh, Davos report was a survey of 150 two countries i believe um uh on the uh for the global gender gap report 2021 and japan was featured in this uh among uh, i believe it was 150 countries and you know what i should have linked to just a a summary uh, the press release will show it but in any case um, Japan came out on the overall ranking, 156 indexed uh, countries, and this is uh, indexed based on various factors to measure gender equality, for example, um, you know, access to education, uh, you know, um, access to medical care and whatnot. It's also based upon things like uh, economic representation, representation in leadership of uh, economic you know, positions in large companies. Uh, the judiciary, uh, po political representation, equality of political representation, and as seems to happen with these things, um, you know, the, the, the Nordic countries got the f top few spots. I think New Zealand did pretty well. They got like fourth. Um, and then as you go down the list out of 156 countries, you know, you head down towards, uh, I believe, uh, 111, you get to start getting to countries like Saudi Arabia. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, which only just recently allowed women to drive. And then you go down nine positions behind Saudi Arabia and you get to Japan at position 120 uh, out of the ranking, the lowest in the uh, developed uh, OECD nations that were listed in the report. Uh, mainly based on Japan's uh, less than something like 10% representation in parliament and uh, even worse representation among uh, leaders of, uh, you know, executives in Japanese companies. Um, so, yeah, it's funny. I mean, for and the thing that frustrates me the most about this is that you could say that, OK, it takes time, arguably, for companies to get women, you know, even when a company decides, OK, we, we're going to have 30 percent board members or 30 percent executives be women or whatever, you know, for, for when companies do not even have career paths to put people in the running for those positions, um, you know, uh, you can't just suddenly take people that you've told to be tea ladies for 30 years and make them the CEO you know you actually have to put people on career tracks for that and there's a buffer time to allow for that and I'm actually aware that Kedon Ren and a lot of companies in Japan are sincerely actually uh, trying to foster and the thing is it's not even that you know you also have to not make it so that your best talent in terms of women are, uh, don't feel pressured to quit when they get married or when they have kids and all sorts of things to be able to get those numbers in the leadership of companies so I kind of understand that you know that is a work in progress and some companies are making an effort although some are definitely not um, but this is something where Japan you know uh, where, where, where as America and you know European countries and so on really started these efforts in the 60s and 70s. Japan is only just starting these efforts and they take, you know, a long time from the seeding to, to show through. So really lagging behind and not even, you know, not easy to address. Politics, however, is a different thing. Under Japan's political system, um, in America and UK, they have electoral systems where basically, in, you know, you'll, you'll just have your local representative. Everybody, your country will be divided up into lots of districts and you'll vote for who you want to have represent your district. And the thing about that first past the post, whoever gets, you know, first to win in every area is that it means that it could be 10 percent of the population support communists. It could be that, you know, you know, 5 percent of the population support environmental radicals. Um, it could be that, you know, 10 percent, you know, 15 percent support a feminist party or whatever. But, you know, it's basically the party that the, the person who gets that 50 percent of the votes in every location is the one that gets represented. And it means that as a result, this is why you end up with a two party system in countries that have systems like that. Um, you know, even if a woman comes a close second in every place in the whole country, it's like the third party candidates as well in America. They never win. In fact, sometimes they'll actually get large chunks of the votes, and but no actual seats and no actual, you know, electoral college votes. Um, and Japan has that. Half of the system in Japan is district-based representation, although they do make it a little bit better than that, that Japan's system is kind of complex. Rather than having a bunch of small districts with all this sort of gerrymandering to make sure that, you know, there's definitely gerrymandering. But one thing they did to counter the gerrymandering that was a huge problem in Japan was they actually have these enormous districts that are combined, which basically have multiple, sometimes five or six representatives, and it'll be the first five or six people to win. So it's common in places like Tokyo that you'll actually have, uh, you know, a right-wing LDP uh, 
you know, as well as a communist, both be elected from the same district and go to go to represent in parliament, which is that's one way that there's more representation. However, that is still a challenge, I suppose, that you still have this problem that you can't guarantee the number or control the number of women that get elected as a result. However, there is another thing. Japan has the same sort of electoral system that Germany and New Zealand has, a mixed member proportional representation system, which means that you vote not only for the person who's representing your district, but also the party that you just want to have, uh, you know, that you want to see in power in parliament. And those parties basically get a list of names that they can just choose whatever names that they like. And those people are basically, if their representatives fall short of the percentage of seats that they have in parliament, and there are seats that are set aside specifically for the proportional representation purpose, you can actually put Krusty the Clown on your list, uh, on your party list of people. You know, they are ranked according in, in, and basically based on the percentage of votes that your party gets, they'll go and fill them. But any party can decide to make the first 15 candidates on their party list women. You know, they can actually decide tomorrow, they can snap their fingers and they can increase the participation of women in parliament, you know, probably as much as the, uh, 30 per, uh, up to 30 percent. However, Japan is lagging behind 10 percent. And even though Abe was talking about women economics and we talked about this for a long time, how, you know, uh, Abe had all these initiatives to try to promote, uh, you know, diversity and, and equality and inclusion of women in the economy and so on. Um, the fact that the party which he leads, uh, that's been leading this, the LDP, is the, has the second lowest, I believe the lowest is actually the Buddhist not supposed to call it Buddhist because you're not supposed to have religious parties in Japan, but the Komeito Party, that's the ally, yeah, the, the parliamentary partner of the LDP. Those two parties that are in government that have supposedly been campaigning on that they are going to improve equality for women uh, are actually have the lowest representation of women. And it's something which they can decide. You, they don't even have to be, you know, given that they get a high number of votes in the proportional representation votes, they just have to fill their list with women, just find women, you know, to put on their list. Um, and they don't do it. So it's one of these things. It's frustrating that, uh, you know, Japan is failing at this and there are things that it can do to improve it right away. There are things which are harder to fix, but there's, uh, but the fact that the end result of this is, is that overall Saudi Arabia is coming out better than Japan at gender equality. I mean, you know, you have a problem. Um, on your gender equality when, uh, you know, countries where, you know, women are not, well, I, I, again, I'm not up with the latest rules in Saudi Arabia, and I know that there has been liberalization, but at least my understanding was is that, you know, the idea of women uh, being well, going out alone in public or driving or, you know, being with a, in the presence of a man without a, a family member present or something like that, being arrestable and, you know, corporal punishable things, um, that's where Japan is, uh, you know, obviously not for the same reasons, but it puts things in perspective that Japan has a long way to go. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a good thing. It made got lots of local Japan uh, coverage and uh, a lot of uh, critical commentators in Japan have pointed out that, yeah, the J J Japan is just doing garbage on this. Um, and it's something, and, and you know what? If they don't, if they don't care, they don't care. But you know, they've proclaimed to care about this issue. The government's actually explicitly made it up. It made it a target. Longest-serving prime minister since World War II, made it like a platform that he was going to improve this, and he had the opportunity to do it. And this is the result. So you know, again, Japan deserves criticism for this. This is a legit thing. So that's another thing that's happening in Japan. And you know, hopefully, this is uh, external embarrassment like this is something which can prompt action. And so we'll see. But you know, there again. Um, it, it, it highlights, it shines a really strong light on how bad Japan is failing at this.